Hello everyone and welcome back to our C++ Primer for Beginners course. In the last episode, we looked at our uh, pointers and functions working together. In this episode though, we're going to look at how creating structs. How do we declare structs and then how can we use them in combination with what we know about pointers and functions to create code that we can edit freely without any like, complicated bits. So let's go through and set that up. Structs are a way of organizing data together and putting them in a little tiny package. So there are two types of structs you can do. You've got unnamed and named structures. So an unnamed structure you declare inside your main uh, function down here and you will define it as struct and then in curly brackets you'll put in the various parts of this. You'll have int, age, um, string, uh, name for example uh, and and so on and so forth and you can then define that struct into a variable name such as uh, customer one okay and if you want to make multiple of these you can do customer one customer two and so on and so forth and if you want to access any of the information inside of those all you do is you do uh, like C out for example we'll go um, customer one dot so full stop and you can put in the option you have here and you can see here the tele sense from the c plus uh, in visual studio it's going to be the two options i can pick from we'll do age for example like so um and if i want to set the value of that i just go into here and do customer one dot age equals 15. okay so 15 c out 15 and that's it. So if I were to push play, we just see it printing out 15. There you go. So alongside that, we can also uh, use these in part of functions and all sorts of things like that too, to pass over information as we see fit. Now, this is, can be a bit uh, cumbersome. And you may want to prefer using a named struct. And if you're using Unreal Engine, you're probably using more named structs than, than not. Uh, and named structs are basically declared outside of the main. So let's take that out of there. Let's take all of this out. And we have to define the struct outside of main first. So in here you do struct as a keyword. And you put in the name of the struct. So what are you going to call this struct type? So we do call it customer. And then in curly brackets, open it up. And as we did just now, we're going to define their age and their name. By the way, if you want to use a string, you do have to make sure you are including string or including a library that is also including string. Okay, so here I've had to include string in order to use the string keyword here. So we've got int age and string name. So then if I want to make a new customer in my main here, I can just type in customer and that would refer to this struct here. I now give it the one I want to give it. So I go customer 01 and leave it like that. Okay, so I've now created a customer one variable, uh, which includes this data. Now at the moment, these are gonna be empty. So if I do wanna access them, I can do so by just going to customer one uh, dot age equals 15. And now I can do C out customer one dot age. Okay, so it gives us the same result we just saw. Uh, if I hit play, you'll see 15 coming out here. But the struct is declared outside of it, which means I can use it anywhere really easily, um, no trouble at all. Now, <clears throat> one thing that is really nice to do with uh, structs is to say point to and change things about them. So let's say I want to create a function here that will change their age. So we're going to create a function. I'm going to go void change age. And that is going to require a parameter. And the first parameter, or two parameters, the first parameter is go which struct we want to change. And we're going to change a customer struct. And it's going to be, um, we'll call it um, uh, customer edit, we'll call it. And we want to put in the age we want to give it. So I'm going to do int uh, new age, we'll call it. And open up the statements so now I can access customer edit and new age from 
our call down here. So I'm going to do change. Uh, actually, if I put this after C out, we can do that there. So I'm going to change age and we're going to give it the customer um, struct it's we want to use. We use customer 01, customer 01. And we're going to give it a new age. We'll do 22. So that's going to pass these information into here. And if I wanted to, I can now go ahead and change this age. Now, at the moment, this is passed by value. So meaning that this value that's gone into here means nothing. It can't, I can't edit, I can't change customer 01. So for example, if I went into here and went C out um, customer 01.age again, okay, um, let me actually put in a new line in here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. like so um so we can get 15 and then the new age coming out but the new age won't be what we want it to be because let's say let's put in this change age here and do customer uh edit oh i'm gonna do it again customer edit dot age equals new age okay so if i leave it like that this is actually not going to print out anything different. Okay, so if I print out change actor, uh, change age, sorry, to 22, if I print this out, it'll just be 15, 15. 15, 15. But if I were to change this now to point to an address of uh, our struct rather than the new version of it itself, then that's a whole different ball game because if we're changing that, we're then changing the value of that. So let's go ahead and change this to use pointers. So what we're going to do is, first of all, when we send over the change age, we're going to send over the address of the one that we're actually referring to, customer one. So you can do that with the ambassand symbol. Just put that before that, and it means it's going to send the address of the customer one reference to it. We're then in the function going to change what we've got up here. So we need to define the pointer that is coming through on here. So to do that, we're going to do struct as the keyword first, then the type of the struct, which is this one up here, and then the name of the struct is going to have the pointer assigner there. So it's going to basically reference, make it a reference here. So this is a pass by reference of customer edit into an in new age. Now, when you do this, you can see this come up as an error now. Now, whenever you want to change a value or read a value from a pointer, you can't use the dot. Uh, icon to help you access that information anymore instead you're using this arrow here so customer edit little arrow so it's a hyphen and create that symbol and then age and that'll get the age here and what it's doing is getting access to the age and setting it to new age so now what we've got here is we've got a system which will allow us to insert customer data change the age of a customer using a function and output that so before it was like putting 15 15 now we should get 15 and then 22 push this and you can see here we've got 15 and 22 so this is where pointers come in really handy it allows you to change uh, simple data without having to copy loads of information across otherwise what we'd have to have done is send over all the information about that customer to this function in order to change one thing and then send it back to reset it back into the thing, which is not the most straightforward way. This is a lot cleaner, a lot easier to use. We're basically saying the customer edit age is gonna be equal to new age now. And there you go. So there you go. Hopefully you understand pointers now a little bit better. Now we've looked at structs and how we can manipulate the structs and change the data in them by passing them as references. So hopefully that helps you out there. Now, in the next episode, we're going to start looking at classes and how we create classes from scratch. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.